Good morning. Today I'm joined by Father John Berg and we're sitting in his beautiful rectory at St. Mary's in Providence, Rhode Island. So Father Berg, before I know who you are, I've known you for years, um, and so will many of our uh, YouTube subscribers and followers, but for everybody who doesn't know you, who are you and where do you come from? So I'm originally from Minneapolis, and I was in the very first year of the fraternity in Scranton, back when we had the seminary there, and uh, I was ordained in 1997 for the fraternity of St. Peter's, so now 23 years of priesthood. Wow. That's, you're getting up there. I'm an old man for the fraternity of St. Peter. That's why I'm all the gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> a number of reasons for those. Um, now, how long have you been assigned to St. Mary's in Providence? So we just uh, celebrated our the two-year anniversary of the fraternity, taking over the parish. Okay. And Bishop Tobin gave it to us. So in August, on the Feast of the Immaculate Heart, is actually our anniversary. Very nice. Very nice. And where is it located? Exactly. What's the street address here? So, so can we're find on you? 538 Broadway. So Broadway is kind of the lovely street that exits from the downtown. So we're on the west side. So running right 95 and Highway 6 and 10. Okay, so very, very accessible for people in a much wider travel to Mass area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it draws from a, a lot of people who are at a good distance, either on 95 up in Massachusetts or towards the south, Connecticut, towards the west. Great, great. Now, what are the three things that you most want to achieve in this parish, and how quickly do you want to achieve them? Well, I think that the, the first thing that had to be achieved was really for the the parish to arrive at you know some solidity. It was a dying parish, as many. It's a, Providence is kind of a typical uh, East Coast town in the sense of a lot of ethnic churches very close by, especially in the downtown area, that were built at a time when people didn't have cars and everything else. And so there's a plethora of them. And uh, this one was really, really struggling. But it's a beautiful church that was built uh, uh, with granite from the south of the state. It's a really beautiful granite structure and so the diocese really did want to uh, to save it uh, and thought that the fraternity would be something that would really draw uh, people from different areas to come in and support it. So uh, the first thing has been to grow the parish. So when we arrived, there was really nothing, uh, you know, and uh, and it's been kind of word of mouth to get people to come. So it's been really, I mean, the first goal is to is to save souls, so it's to establish everything that a parish should have, a real parochial life. And that was the goal from the first, to get the liturgy up to speed and get the servers trained and everything else, and then to get adult education, um, you know, formation for the youth, whether it be altar servers or sodalities and things like that. So the unique thing about the, about here is that uh, it's there's a lot, there are archives and it has a really rich history. So to kind of reestablish what already existed but hadn't existed for maybe let's say 50 years or 100 years uh, has been wonderful to go back in and get the Holy Name Society for the men going and everything else. So even though uh, we're starting afresh in a certain way, it's tapping back into all those good things which uh, the church was providing and uh, still have the means for the sanctification of those different Right. to the faithful. And do you have everything you need to achieve that noble end? Well, I mean, one of the things that we have to have is a dry building, so <laughs> <laughs> they had done the roof before I got here, but uh, we're working on the tower right now, so people have been really sacrificial to repoint it. So as beautiful as the uh, granite is, uh, it needs a lot of care, uh, of course, in the joint repointing and everything else. So we have water have water coming in and some different damage, and we'll get the bells ringing again. So, the so bells that, that's a big shout-out for a capital campaign, everybody. If you want to help Father Berg at St. Mary's, you he needs a new bell Providence. tower. <laughs> Um, what are the particular challenges that you face then, you know, starting a new apostolate with this long history, but with virtually no infrastructure? Well, I think that one is for people to know that you're really going to be here and that it's going to be something steady. So uh, I think that with the fraternity, it's a wonderful thing. It's been, you know, to tell the people, look, you know, it's, I'm going to be the first priest here, but the next priest who's going to come is going to be just like me, and he's going to have the same formation, and he's going to carry on the same program. So that when you sort of invest in a parish, if you say, well, I'm, we're going to drive 45 minutes or 50 minutes to uh, to get to Mass, uh, and we're going to, you know, invest in a bell tower and, you know, start this program and everything else, it's that idea that um, it's going to continue and, and have that. Okay, so 
the longevity of the apostolate, that solidity, um, that seems to be something that the Catholic Church has kind of lacked over recent years. It seems that uh, you know we've seen scandal after scandal and uh, all sorts of things besetting the the practice of a religion. You know, even right now we're we're kind of still locked down in in many of our apostolates. Do you think that's going to have a, a good or an adverse effect on the traditional Latin Mass and particularly fraternity apostolates? Well, I mean, I think that like a lot of places, there's been steady growth for the fraternity because of that for one of the reasons. And being a religious order, I think, is a, um, is a help to that. And I think also having a very defined apostolate you know, mm-hmm. of what we are, both for the sanctification of the priests and I think that's spilling over to the faithful. You know, it is, it is having the Latin Mass, but it's also that spirituality of having the life and the sacrifice of the Mass at the center of your Mass and offering your life as a sacrifice. So I think when the people come and they understand that and they have something which is very tangible to move forward even in their own spiritual life and take that on. They, of course, don't become in any way members of the fraternity, but I think that they, they see some of the lovely things, the attachment to the Holy See and all of those other elements are, are important for them later on as persons sure. as well. Sure. Um, speaking then of the the growth of fraternity apostolates, we've, we've had many people being interviewed here have said, oh yes, we're, uh, we've seen our numbers grow up. Um, because of that stability, it seems that we, o- we offer the same thing all the time, everywhere. Uh, what do you think the future of the fraternity then is in North America? How, how, what, what do you see that being? Well, I think it will uh, continue kind of on a double prong as it has that our founders wanted. And I think too that the um, uh, that was seen after some more pontificum, which which was to run really fine parishes. I think that will be you know exemplary in a lot of ways, and then also uh, to be somewhat of an influence on the local clergy. I think that um, you know a lot of young priests in the diocese too. Uh, not necessarily all young, but now they're young for me, <laughs> uh, who want to begin and want to add a daily mass here or whatever it might be, or to develop that within their own spiritual life and being able to offer the extraordinary form. So that part of it. Certainly, and I think after it will just depend on you know the number of vocations and the quality, but I think we'll continue to open up in different apostolates. Mm-hmm. Good. We're asking everybody this, but um, the purpose of this YouTube channel was not to get into polemics or to get into the politics of the church or anything like that, but to really try and give some qualitative instruction to help people get to heaven. You know, we are priests; it's our main job. What would your piece of advice be to anyone for how they can help themselves get to heaven? Yeah, I I think that maybe to make it a little bit broader would be themselves and their children. I think that we underestimate, I think, you know, the answers that the faith gives us to um, things that men struggle with, the understanding that we have of um, of original sin and why man is capable of doing glorious things like heading up a stairway on 9-11 to save people knowing that he's going to die, and at the same time that he can fall into drug addiction and everything else, and that it's the church that all men see that in the end, that we're capable of beautiful things and we're capable of horrific things, and I think the church gives the answer to that and gives the answer as far as um, how man can be redeemed despite uh, the the faults which are there. So to me, one of the things I think that comes and that I've seen kind of being back in the parish is really the hunger to not necessarily do apologetics maybe as it used to be done in the sense of, you know, it's going to be, you know, this biblical passage and that, and you're talking with evangelicals a lot, but much more on the level of the natural law and Mm -hmm. what man is and does he have an end and, you know, what is life really about? The the question of the rich young man sort of that John Paul II goes through in Veritati Splendor. So I think that... um, having that confidence that the church has the answers and going to a lot of the different writings and I hope, you know, us preaching and doing adult education, I think the tapping into those things and um, knowing them uh, is going to, it really bolsters the individual's faith in the end to say, because I think, you know, where we're headed more than likely, uh, you know, is more and more of that being called into question, you know, children having a lot of questions. Well, why does the church teach this? Why doesn't the church like this kind of people or whatever, you know, that it's all going to be turned in those ways. And in the end, to be able to see, well, this is what it really means to love and this is what it means for a person to be perfected is what we need to see. We've seen a lot of that 
over the last three or four months, the, the rise in identity politics and the destructive nature that that has on the social fabric. Mm -hmm. And how do you think the church should address the issues of identity politics and or what we call now the culture war that's going on in America? Well, I, I think the best thing to do is to go back to those um, encyclicals at the turn of the century in a certain way. So we did, we just happened to be on encyclicals this year for our adult education, and we went back and read Verum Navarum on um, socialism and communism and uh, talked about this sort of strife that it tries to build and what does it man for, mean for man to be equal as far as his eternal destiny goes, but unequal in, in this world and how virtue is the thing that needs to be built up. And also to go through um, Very Tati Splendor, to go through Casti Canubi on marriage, you know, I think all of these different subjects which are there, it's there, these encyclicals have, you know, really the, the, the foundation for it. So to me, it's for the church to go back and as it always has, uh, as you see in those documents and go back and say, well, what are the, what are the first principles? You know, I mean, what, when it really comes back to it, why does the church have this teaching about divorce and remarriage? What does it really mean? And what do you lose if you, uh, if you, uh, you know, see it on that or something like that? So it's, to me, it's to go back to the, to the first principles. Okay, so we need to get back to where we first came from. They're kind of like St. Mary's. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Thank you very much, Father Brent. All right, God bless you. Thank you for having me. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our FSSP YouTube channel.